That's Solid to Swing by Dire Straits. Um, one of my favorite songs by that band, one of my favorite riffs by any band, one of my favorite guitar sounds by any guitar player. Um, I feel like I was 15 or 16 or something like that when I first heard it. And I think it was a music video. I think it was like VH1, one of those shows where it was a bunch of music videos from bands that were putting out songs before music videos were made. So I think it was just like a, a bunch of live Dire Straits footage of like, you know, rolled up blazers and headbands. Um, and I was so into what I was hearing um, because I mean, to this day, and then also when you consider music at that time, like the, A, there's never been a guitar player like him. Anyone that that um, kind of dips their toe into those waters just end up getting compared to him, um, myself included on my better days. <laughs> Um, and then also like the, the feel of that song, like that wasn't that kind of fast feel is something that I feel like we're more used to in like contemporary indie music or war on drugs or something like it felt, um, really unlike, you know, the Bruce Springsteen's and the, um, I don't know, the, this, the, the mid seventies rock and roll, like it was just fast. Eventually, like when he dug into the song, it's, it's clear that like the, the it seems like I'm speculating a little bit, but it seems like he was so aware that the riff was so strong that he just let it be the chorus. Cause it's not like there's this big old chorus that everyone sings along with, with that song. Um, you know, he says Sultan's a swing. Um, but other times right before that setting up that riff, he says other things and it's fine because the riff is going to be the thing that we all kind of like join back together on as listeners. He really, he really, oh, um, I guess shined a light on the Strat. That was a big deal for me at that age. I feel like I really was understanding it in a new way. I found myself, like when I play a, a telly and I just slam into a loud G chord and through an any amp, I kind of know what it's gonna be. I know how to do that. And then same with like a Les Paul or some sort of, you know, 335 or something like that. With the Strat, that never really worked for me. Like I would, I would play it like I'd play these other electrics and it would just be a little too bright or a little too bristly. And um, I didn't know why. And I wanted to play a strap because to me, it's like the image of rock and roll is this shape. Um, but I just, it was never sounding like guitar to me and just sounded like something a lot harder. <laughs> and hearing him play strap, it showed me kind of for the first time what a dynamic instrument it is. And, that might not be news to a lot of people, but for me, it was a big deal where, um, you know, these, these Dire Straits songs, especially early on before he got his uh, burst Les Paul for like Brothers in Arms and stuff. Um, it's not a distorted tone. It's not like a gainy tone. It's pretty quiet. And he always has it in that out of phase position, that fourth position um, when you have the mod and you don't have the, just the three. Um, and that's, that's his sound. And it's so, cool to hear a guitar player commit to a tone, commit to a, like a pickup setting, um, knowing that that's going to be um, what they're known for. Or maybe not even knowing, but that ended up being the case. It also taught me a lot about this hand. Um, look, once I really tried to dig in and learn the song and a lot of his songs, like I feel like where he puts the chord, where he puts the, the, the leading notes of the riff, and where the bass is heading are two different places. Um, and obviously if you're playing with a big, you know, with a rock and roll band, you don't necessarily need to cop the bass part too. But if you're playing this song by itself, um, you do. And you don't necessarily want to do the same pushes. Like up top, you're going. Like that B flat chord's getting pushed. Um, but then when you, where, where you, when you put the bass where you want to put it, you have to wait on it. So. <laughs> So like some of these chords I'm hitting before I'm playing the bass note, and um, that was really hard for me. Um, I had to like really spend time with that, and and also learn how to put the 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 melody up top with 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 like instead of just kind of slamming with a pick. Um, it was it was something that was a lot more artful, a lot more specific 
Um, so. And I love his quick notes too. That feels like so signature to him. Um, I try to rip it off all I can. Um, but that those two things, like the the relationship between where the bass is hitting and where where the chord is pushing, and these like these beautiful like ghost notes that he plays, um, it's become a something that I've tried to implement and use um, in my own playing to the extent that I'm capable. And just the way that, that a riff like that will, will allow itself, will kind of offer itself up for a band to just keep riding on. Like there's so much guitar playing in that song and it's just not enough. Like there's never en enough um, of the, the Mark Knopfler solos um, on that song. And you, even in live versions, like they'll go on for seven or eight minutes and it's just so infectious. And I think it's a combination of the, the riff, the progression and feel, and of course, just his playing. Cause you know, there's this weird thing where like sometimes like the, the better and faster and more technically able someone is, sometimes that corresponds to like how much less I want to hear it. And a guitar player like him, he is the exception to that rule. I mean, he um, is a technical master and yet it still has such beauty and such music and there's never I never feel like he's wanting to impress me um, And that's a rare thing in really capable guitar players not not necessarily I'm not saying that that's what that's what is going through their heads, but sometimes that's um, My experience where I'm, I'm responding to like wow It's amazing that he can do that rather than like this was a beautiful experience and they're speaking in a language that you know isn't using words um, that's that's the feeling I love, and that's that's the feeling that this riff has, and that's the feeling that guitar player has.